series against the Mets up in New York. With a liner, it's in the right of base hit. Randyak will score. Gordon to third. Miami has the first run. And it's and Prado that delivers. Is that a better guy I'd rather have up there than our team Prado? 1-1. One, one. Fly ball right field well hit. Stanton goes back. It's deep and it is gone. Miami, Marlins and Mets rather lopsided so far this year. You saw that Daniel Murphy home run, the deciding factor last night. Mets getting game one. This would be game two, three game set. Martin Prado almost a hero until Murphy hit one out. David Phelps on the hill for the fish. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. The Mets right now are a juggernaut in the East. No one, including the Marlins, can beat them right now. They are 14 and 3 in the division and 5 and 0 oh against the Fish. You don't get these games back against your division rivals. No, you don't. And the Mets have done a lot of damage, certainly against the Marlins. They're 10 and 0 oh at home. They haven't lost the game to City Field. So you match up against teams in your division. You want to play a little bit better than the Marlins have against the New York Mets, but the Mets have outplayed them in just about every category. Let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, in the four game sweep up in New York and the game last night head to head you know batting average is pretty even I think the telling number is the ERA well you just look at the the last uh, the last number the earned run average everything else is just said look at that home runs the same uh, batting average about the same but the ERA not there the Mets have outplayed and they've outpitched the Marlins in the five games one guy that did not contribute to that high ERA when he pitched against the Mets or even in his last start against the Phillies, David Phelps, who has found a home here in Miami. Yeah, he has. Not only has he found a home in Miami, he's found a home in the rotation, uh, working every five days. Remember, he started the year uh, working out of the bullpen. Very versatile pitcher. He was so as a Yankee last year, 32 games, 17 of those as a starter. So the youngster out of Notre Dame finds himself in the rotation as a Marlin. He goes up against the 24-year-old Rafael Montero, had a couple of starts in AAA. We saw him for a brief inning in New York. Then he was sent down. Two starts to build up his stamina a little bit. He'll probably go about 90 pitches tonight. So Montero for the Mets. Phelps for the Marlins. Emails and tweets. Hashtag Marlins Park. Jessica Blaylock will explain when we return.
wide open and ready are the email and tweets ready to go. Jessica Blaylock is with us. Jess, you ready? I am so ready. Rich, tonight it is social media night at the ballpark. It's also an email and Twitter Tuesday, and it is all about the ballpark. Tonight, Marlins fans, we want to hear from you. We want you to send your tweets to at Fox Marlins. Send those emails to foxmarlins at gmail.com. Use that hashtag Marlins Park and tell us when you come to a ball game, where do you like to hang out? Right now, I'm in section 13. I'm standing by this food truck, but this is no ordinary food truck. The cool thing about this is that the menu is always changing and it's always based on whoever the Marlins are playing. So with the Mets in town, let's go ahead and take a look at what's on tonight's menu. Tonight, we've got pretzel bites with mustard lager cheese. We've got pastrami tacos. And mm, that sounds so good, that New York strawberry cheesecake. But there's only a few left, so be sure to come and get them. And Rich, Tommy, don't worry. I was listening last night. I've got the taste of Miami on my checklist. I may have a surprise for you later. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jessica. Didn't know they made pastrami tacos, but those sound pretty good, they too. They do. Mets and Marlins. Can Miami turn the page after a painful finish last night? We'll find out next. to by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Auto Nation. Save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit autonation.com. Curtis Granderson is ready. Mets and Marlins. Game 2. Come on out. Greet the Mets, meet the Mets. Marlins can't seem to beat them this year. The Mets are 15 and 5. Terry Collins' lineup looks this way. J.M. Lexus brings it to you. After Curtis Granderson, Juan Legata's look at that 421 against the Fish. Lucas Duda walked three times last night. Eric Campbell's in the cleanup spot. Daniel Murphy, the hero at the end of the game, is at second base. Ruben Tejada gets a start at shortstop. He hurt the Marlins with a three-run double in game four in New York. Kirk Newen eyes to start and left. Anthony Recker behind the plate. And Rafael Montero hits ninth. And that's 28-year-old David Phelps, the Notre Dame product, gets start number three for Miami. I guess the best way to describe David Phelps, a very versatile pitcher, and we've seen that already coming off a nice outing against the Phillies in Philadelphia, seven innings, three hits, no runs, and through just 95 pitches. 
And here we go. Phelps misses out. You could hear Ron Kulpa say that. He's calling balls and strikes. Pitch a penny, bringing you the first pitch. Granderson oh. takes a strike. Hit his first home run, leading off Sunday night against the Yankees. Of course, ironically, it was in his old stomping ground, Yankee Stadium, where he had some big home run numbers. Yeah, I believe it was his 29th career leadoff home run. You saw the odd numbers on Granderson. The 212 batting average, but the 358 on base percentage. Inside. That's in. He walked last night. He's walked 15 times this year. Yeah, not too many times do you have a, a guy who's 60 points higher on his on base than his slugging. Oh. Struck him out. Granderson didn't like it. But I'll tell you what, he took a couple of other pitches that were very close. And it finally caught up to him. Fox tracks will tell us it's where it crosses the front of the plate and it's a strike. It's yeah, a it knee is. high strike. Fox track and umpires call balls and strikes off the front of the plate. So if it crosses the knees at the front of the plate, even if the batter is in the back of the box, the umpire will call it a strike. Oh. And Phelps opens up Juan Ligaris with the strike. You saw the Ligaris numbers. Against Miami. He added to those with two hits last night, including a double, and he fouls it back. This guy is a, a budding superstar. He reminds uh, me a lot of Carlos Gomez, maybe the early years. Yeah, three years ago. And maybe not with the same flair, but certainly a, a gold glove, if not uh, the best, one of the best center fielders in the game. Sprays a ground ball, Morse's way. Oh, that's a nice pick. It is. Difficult hop, and the former shortstop, believe it or not, at 6'5, 240, makes the play. What do you always tell youngsters? Expect the bad hop. Ah, there it is. If you're just going to play it nice and easy, think you're going to get that good hop, you don't make that play. That's one of those you're happy you didn't get your grill in front of it. <laughs> By the way, Lagares has gotten a lot of help over the last couple of years from Carlos Gomez, his good friend, too. Lucas Duda, Miami just can't get him out. Three walks last night, and he smacks a single to center, two out single. Miami's defense, and Tommy, it's brought to you by BMW. Well, there it is, Ichiro in left with Osuna and Giancarlo filling out the outfield. Prado, Echeverria, D. Gordon. Boy, it's been a solid defense all year. Michael Morse and JT Real Muto. What an athletic play he made last night. Here is Eric Campbell. We ready for the first email or tweet? I've got a tweet from Alexander, and it has to do with David Phelps. Is Phelps likely to go back to the bullpen when Henderson Alvarez gets back, or would the Marlins consider using a six man rotation? Tell you what, if he's pitching well, then he may make that decision by his play, and others may make that decision for him if they're not pitching well. There you go. How to answer a tweet in eight seconds or less.
tonight for Jessica Blaylock on an email on Twitter Tuesday. Some new places to visit around the park. Jam Lexus brings you Miami's lineup. D. Gordon still leading all of baseball in hits. Martin Prado, a big hit in the ninth last night. Giancarlo Stanton, Marcelo Zuna, Michael Morse, JT Real Muto, each rows in left, to Danny Echeverry at short, and David Phelps hits ninth. Then there's a look at uh, Rafael Montero, 24 year old, not a real tall guy. He's only six feet tall out of the Dominican Republic. Yeah, he was with the Mets when the Marlins were in New York, and he pitched two thirds of an inning in one of the games out of the bullpen. But at that time they they then sent him to triple A because they wanted him to get a couple of starts. Stretch his arm out a little bit and get him in the rotation here tonight. He made two starts at Las Vegas. His numbers weren't all that great. But certainly climbing through the Mets organization. This is just his fifth year in the organization. He's been really good. His minor league numbers jump off the page. A 2.69 ERA. And Rich, you had a, a nice talk with uh, Terry Collins about no, no, this is not a six man rotation. He's just getting this start here tonight. He is a spot starter. Gordon pulls it foul. Obviously, Terry Collins has Matt Harvey to think about. And how do you get him to the end of September and into October coming off Tommy John surgery? But Collins reminded me that. Jacob DeGrom figures in this as well because neither of those guys have eclipsed the 190 inning mark and really had that long major league season. Struck him out. Gordon called out on strikes and he and Ron Culpa have a bit of a, a chat, one sided conversation. Uh, D. Gordon and uh, Curtis Granderson, a little something in common now early in the game. Let's see if this pitch came back. It's a good job of Wrecker framing it, but it misses. Just barely off the plate. Well, it's close. But yeah, it was just off by a hair. Here's Martin Prado. So Montero, a spot starter, when the Mets are able to give an extra day or two between starts for both DeGrom oh. and for Harvey. And as Terry Collins pointed out on Marlins Live, Bartolo Colon is no spring chicken in his early 40s. That's how they're going to do it. They'd like to get DeGrom and Harvey. To the end of September, right around 30 starts and right around 180 to 190 innings. So that they'll have them available in October. And if the Mets keep playing like this, they'll be there in October. What a start, 15 and 5. Well, the most wins they've ever had in their franchise history in April is 16. One and two to Martin Prado. Great at bat by Prado last night. And were it not for the uh, heroics of Daniel Murphy, Prado would be getting a lot more run off of last night's RBI single with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. It's that to center. Ligaris runs it down. BMW brings you. The Mets defense. Yeah, they've made a few changes tonight. Uh, left fielders Kirk Newen, Heiss, Lagaris, and Granderson, the rest of the outfield. Ruben Tejada gets the start at short. Eric Campbell, the third baseman. There's that Daniel Murphy, Lucas Duda, and Anthony Record is behind the plate. Giancarlo Stanton. Fastball misses low. One of the things is Stanton checks in, one for four last night, five home runs. The Mets would like Montero to throw a little more variety of pitches. Stanton pulls that one foul. Last year, in his short time with the Mets, he was one and three and eight starts. He threw upwards of 80% fastballs. And so the Mets have really tried to work with him on throwing more of a variety of pitches. 1 1. Well, you mentioned uh, lots of fastballs. And that was not one of them. His changeup's probably his second best pitch. The secondary stuff is improving. He has a pretty good slider. And he appears to throw lots of strikes. Stanton called strike three. And Rafael Montero goes one, two, three with a pair of punch outs. And the first underway back into the tweets and the emails when we return.
You see her around town. She's at Marlins Park tonight to watch the Mets and the Marlins. UD was here last night. Udonis Haslam. Ichiro goes back. Daniel Murphy stays in the yard with that swing. Martina might be looking for a match. Rich. She can, she can still play. Kids eat free tomorrow. 7-10. Mets and Marlins finish off the series. Every child 12 and under get a ticket. And a coupon with a free KMB Frank. Bag of free to lay chips. Small Pepsi. Aquafina water. Get your tickets at Marlins.com. So if you've got a kid 12 and under, bring them to the game. And they will eat free tomorrow night. Oh. Fastball strike. Ruben Tejada, Kurt Neuenheis will follow. Tejada making his second start of the year against the Marlins. Broken bat, skate save, and a beauty by Phelps, and he flips it on over to first. You can see Phelps actually put the, the gate down and yeah, this, it. this is intentional. Yes. He makes a good play. That's why I said skate save and a beauty. Watch this. Boop. Okay, moves the foot a little bit, gets it off the heel, calmly goes over. Okay. Calmly goes over. Has to hustle it a little bit because Tejada was moving up the line pretty well. So nicely done by David Phelps. Here is Neuenheis. And we have an email from Kevin about catching. Tougher to catch a in the majors than it is in the minors. Wild pitches, inconsistency of minor league pitchers might make it tough oh. in the minors. And I guess that's a, a JT Real Muto question. Yeah, that's a good question because I think at the major league level, you have pitchers who are easier to handle as far as throwing strikes. You oh. might have some young wild kids in the minor leagues, a little tougher. But so, uh, it's not easy position, however you look at it. That sounds like a homework assignment for us We'll tomorrow. talk to JT about it. Thank you, Kevin. Neuenheis hits a titanic high, high fly ball. Stanton over, and he makes the catch. That's a six pitch inning from David Phelps. Marlins. Mets scoreless. My tour around the ballpark. Look, I'm going to be talking all night about food, but right now it is all about an adult beverage. And if you want a good one, then this is where you need to come to. It's the Rita Cabana. You're going to be able to come up here and pick from four different flavors of margarita. They've got lime, they've got mango, they've got strawberry, they've got raspberry. It's a great place to come and grab a drink and socialize. You're still going to have an awesome view of the game. But hey, if margarita isn't your thing, you can always grab a good old beer. They're going to get you taken care of in section 13 at the Goose Island beer kiosk. Sam Adams is also going to have a great variety of cervezas for you in section 25. And Rich and Tommy, if you're wondering, I did learn that word cervezas oh. from Craig Minervini. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Scoreless Mets Marlins. Bottom of the second. Marcelo Zuna, Michael Morse, JT Real Muto, and Rafael Montero. 
He struck out a pair and went one, two, three in the first. Goes a one and one against Marcelo Zuna. Sometimes I think a uh, kind of a feeling out process when you're facing a, a young pitcher such as Montero that most of the hitters haven't seen, with the exception of those two thirds of an inning he pitched in New York. Try to pick up fastballs, try to see what his slider does, how often, when he'll use his changeup. His last major league start was last September against Houston. This is a way he's got a good live arm and as you noted the changeup is starting to become a real good weapon for him and I think that's almost a birthright for any Dominican right hand. Three two. Ozuna. Taps it out to short. And Tejada throws him out. So Montero has retired all four that he's faced. Marlins Fan Express is back, ready to bring you straight to the action at Marlins Park to book this luxury motor coach for your group. 305 480 2523 or email groups at Marlins.com. Michael Morse now. Well, I've had a few emails. Tommy is writing heard on the uh, tweets. Yeah, I have an interesting tweet. It's uh, really causing a dilemma for me, but I, I will read it. Morse fouls it out of play. Tweets from uh, Chris. He said, if you had the option of the Marlins winning the World Series or saving at Rich Waltz from drowning, which would you choose? Rich, I've been. I've been here for a couple of World Series. I can't let you go, partner. You got to be around. Well, what if if I got the ring and then I drowned? Nah, I couldn't have that happen. Couldn't have that happen. <laughs> but thanks for that question. We were in Milwaukee one time and Tommy got the Tommy if you could be a cheese which one would you be <laughs> see I already forgot what I said there's the uh, one one it's lifted into the seats and out of play hey here's how to get a hold of us on both Twitter and email and you can participate at Fox Marlins will do it on Instagram or Twitter email address Fox Marlins at gmail.com Fox Marlins at gmail Dot com. We'll get in as many as we can tonight as we explore the ballpark. Outside. It's outside. Claude Delorme, vice president of ballpark operations, will be with us in the fourth inning. We can save a few ballpark questions for him. So if you got any questions about Marlins Park, if there's something you'd like to see in Marlins Park, send that in and we'll ask Claude on the air and of course Jessica Blaylock tonight is going all over to see some of the new places she's already been to the food truck the margarita stand three two coming and Morse went around tell you what Rafael Montero looks sharp First five hitters, all outs, three strikeouts. A lot of tentative swings. Uh, the strikeouts in the first inning were called strikes. He's made some good pitches. This isn't a question, but Denise just letting us know that she's heading up uh, on Sunday to Marlins Park from Key West. Always like to have have our fans head up from Key West. Enjoy the day. Rio Muto takes outside. Miami Sports Minute has this. Are C Shack struggles a lack of reps, or do you see something deeper? How is his spring velocity? There's the 1 0. I think it's a combination. Oh. Yes, lack of reps. He's never going to make that excuse. Uh, I think in the past, we've seen and we saw it last night, his velocity down somewhat. And in the past, it always appears that as the months go by, the velocity goes up a little bit. And hopefully that's the case. Had a few tweets as to who 
who would be the next out of the bullpen if Cishek continues to struggle. There's some choices. Could be an A.J. Ramos, could be Brian Morris, Sam Dyson. Fastball the way to Real Muto. JT was 0 for 4 last night. But when you've had a little bit of a track record, which Shrek has, uh, you hope to see that velocity come up and him settle into a nice groove. 2 2 is out. Mets and Marlins scoreless, bottom of the second. Second game of a three game series. The Mets in dramatic fashion. And in game one last night, a Daniel Murphy three run homer. In the top of the ninth, the difference in a 3 1 New York win. And Rio Muto swings and misses. Rafael Montero looks like not good right now. He's punched out four already. Not a lot of regular work and as a result you see the difference this season as opposed to his really nice run here in Miami as Tommy pointed out we've seen his fastball velocity early in the season be down in that high 80 mark and by the time you get to midseason it's up in the low 90s. The other thing with the uh, velocity down which we saw last night there was no location the pitches that were hit were very hittable. He can get by 89 90 with good location and I would think it would maybe be a concern if you get into mid May and that velocity is still down. Oh. David Phelps breaking ball starts Anthony Wreckers at bat. Rafael Montero and Curtis Granderson. Eight nine one. We've had a few emails. On this topic as one is lifted to Morse. <laughs> And Morse makes the catch and as Montero comes to the plate the pitcher hitting Jeremy wants to know what do you think about all the controversy Adam Wainwright's injury Max Scherzer being scratched Scherzer was the first to be vocal about it with changing the National League to a DH league to mirror that of the American League what 47 years now the American League has had the DH yes yeah, since 1973 well you know you know where I stand. I, I like the National League style of play. If you start changing because look what happened when they changed the rule at the plate because Buster Posey messed his knee up. They changed that back. So all of a sudden if a pitcher goes over to cover first base and he twists his ankle are we not going to have pitchers cover first base anymore. So keep the National League the way it is. I think most National League managers enjoy managing in this league. And the pitchers will just have to deal with it. Little tapper and Phelps gets on over to first. 
That may have been one of the first mini Tommy Hutton rants of the uh, season. You sound like Madison Bumgarner, who said many of the same things uh, today, talking about. Uh, and, and the other thing that Bumgarner. Well, you got a matchup tonight, as a matter of fact, the Dodgers and Giants, Bumgarner and Kershaw, both good hitters. I guarantee they both want to hit. And one of the things Bumgarner pointed out is all the hijinks that have gone on in the American League with guys getting hit, pitchers in the middle of it, in Bumgarner's words, that probably wouldn't happen as much in the National League because those starting pitchers have to come to the plate. Absolutely. It's an interesting topic. I hate to say this. I, I think somewhere down the line we'll probably see the DH in both leagues. But I hope it's not too soon. It's a strike. David Phelps born in St. Louis and then found his way to Notre Dame. Granderson rips that one down the line. Stanton playing it off the wall. Granderson with good speed has an easy double. It's no way to treat a former teammate. Those two guys wore the pinstripes as teammates. Good low ball hitter is Curtis Granderson. And when we saw him in New York, he just had the feeling that his average would get a little better. And it has. Now Ligaris, who bounced to first, and it took a nice play by Michael Morris to hold him oh. and hold that ball from getting into the outfield. Morris a sprawling stop. Yeah, good reaction play. Talked about Ligaris first at bat. He's put together three consecutive multi-hit games, though so he has been on fire. The pitch misses inside. We're going all around the park. You saw that last shot, a fat head, so to speak, that giant head. One of the things the Marlins have done to a lot of the elevators here at Marlins Park that's really cool is they've put faces of Marlin players that size yeah, like that. on the elevators. There's a crate, uh, Ichiro one right down in the uh, by the Diamond Club. There's a terrific on Instagram a photo of Jose Fernandez standing next to and smiling next to his elevator. And a, a lot of folks, a lot of fans who come on the concourse enjoy how the lineup is displayed with the Marlins jerseys. Tough to tell who that is. Might be Ozuna. Yeah, it is. Kind of an elevator would they put Bruce Bochy's uh, in the San, if they did that in San Francisco. A really a freight elevator. <laughs> you know the ones that open double wide. Boch knows we love him so that's all right. That looks like Giancarlo there. And Yelich side by side. Had a few tweets about Christian Yelich when he'll be back. Hopefully it'll be soon. Hopefully it'll be when he's due to come off the disabled list. Tell you what if you're David Phelps and you've watched the Marlins and the Mets play five times. You want to get Ligaris here Duda. Has been dangerous Ligaris has done a lot of damage against the fish as well. Granderson's in scoring position with two outs. And he stays alive with an emergency swing. Yeah one of the real keys for David Phelps. As you watch it because he's not overpowering you watch how he uses all the quadrants of the plate. High and away low and away up and in down and in. And he has to to have success move the ball around. He really felt that the, the start against Philly was a big breakthrough because not only was it successful. But it stretched him out that went back to the screen. He was able to go 95 pitches in that. Which he said all of a sudden has him right on track to start and. Make the next step from 95.
Ligaris battling. Phelps. Breaking ball. Check swing. Didn't go. Real Muto picked it. Tagged him just in case. And the count is three and two. This copyright telecast presented by the authority. The Marlins may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. Counts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. For the Miami Marlins. Pace of play, that means announcers must read the disclaimer. Not quite chipmunk speed, but well, I know close it's, to it's it. something you worked on all offseason, too. And I think you've uh, much improved your time. 3 2. Bouncer up the middle. Gordon is there. Down to a knee. On to first in time. And Phelps is through the third. Three scoreless innings. Jessica Blaylock exploring Marlins Park. Ah, photo booth time. You think she picked the right one? Section 15, Marlins Park photo booth this year. <laughs> well, that's that's why we picked the other one. <laughs> well, right now, a scoreless game. Remember the Marlins and the Mets played seven and a half innings of scoreless ball last night. Jared Cozart and Dylan G. Here's Ichiro. Tonight it's David Phelps and Rafael Montero of all people. A rookie right hander has retired all six and he has struck out four Marlins already. Oh and two. And a tweet from Kev Rich and Tommy who would you rather have batting second when Yelich comes back Yelich or Prado. That's a good question. I think with the way the Marlins have played with Martin Prado, and remember, Mike Redman made the move just prior to Christian Yelich not being able to play. So I, I would probably see him stay with Prado, and you know, you, you can put Christian number five, number six. Depending on who's hot, if it's a Morris or an Ozuna, you kind of play around with those three hitters. Some have said hit Yelich three, move Stanton four. That's a possibility too. Two two to Ichiro. That is just foul. As Larry Vanover, best dance moves of the night from Larry Vanover, the third base umpire, and to get up. And get out of the way. Now, let's watch this again. And it landed just to the side of the bag. Foul. Let's start calling him tippy toes, Van Over. Third base umpire, first base umpire can get help from the home plate umpire in that case if he's knocked over or trips or doesn't see it. 
It was close. Breaking ball. Ichiro dribbles it down the line. Two and two. Broken bat. Murphy gets him. First out, bottom of the third. It's one of the few times each row breaks a bat. Superhero night on Friday. And fireworks as well. Marlins and Phillies dress up as your favorite superhero. All I got, all I got to get is the Tommy Hutton Phillies powder blue jersey, and I'll be there. Get the superhero night package. 25 bucks at Marlins.com slash special events. That's the superhero night package. And a fireworks show after the game. Oh. And the Phillies will be in town. There is a Danny Echeverria. 0 for 3 last night, and that snapped a, a nice run for Echeverria. Had a nine game hit streak. Was the National League Player of the Week. Oh. Montero is dealing right now. He's hitting his spots, mixing pitches. About the one thing the Mets will keep their eye on. You see 40 pitches. They they have a number in mind, kind of around 90 for Montero in this one tonight. And the bad news to that is that the Mets bullpen has fired out 16 consecutive scoreless innings. It's hard to find any blemish. On the Mets season so far at 15 and 5. Echeverria pulled it foul. Although Mr. Met was not as sharp as he normally was when we were up at City Field. That's about it. That's the only thing I could find that. Well, he's been pretty sharp because the Mets are 10 and 0 at City Field. Why he individually. Well, oh, okay. Too many Shake Shack visits during the winter. There's a one two. Wow. Goodness. Outside corner. Rafael Montero. Five strikeouts in the first eight he's faced. As I mentioned that's the third strikeout boy that's borderline that could have gone the other way. But it's the third that's been looking. Now Phelps and he takes outside. Dahlia tweets. It would be nice if you mentioned the whiff in raising money for RBI. That's right. Any any tweet hashtag whiff line to right hashtag W H I F F will help raise money for reviving baseball in the inner city for the Marlins right now it's scoreless here.
there. Yeah, it is out there in left field, the Budweiser Bar, balcony. Rich Waltz, along with the uh, vice president of Ballpark. Now it used to be Ballpark Development. <laughs> you did a fine job of developing this ballpark. Now you're the vice president of Ballpark Operations. Claude Delorme joins us now. Hey, Rich, how are you? We have Jessica Blaylock out and about uh, tonight. She's visiting some of the new attractions here. She was at the food truck down below. She hit the margarita stand and the photo booth. Uh, for the fans out there who haven't been to Marlins Park this year, or maybe that have been and didn't get to walk around, what's new at the park? What uh, what are some of the new features or, or tweaks that they'll see at the park? If they go to the uh, Taste of Miami, they'll see Mama Mama Choa. Um, we got they, they're preparing a really a, a, a signature pork sandwich, and uh, really pleased to have them on board. And uh, they've been doing some great business. Uh, Pan Express is, uh, has expanded their menu as well in the uh, Taste of Miami. Uh, we have a fit cart at Section 26 as well. So these are all the gluten-free items from the chicken sandwich to the chicken Caesar wrap. Vegetarian and items as well, I'm absolutely, told. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. So uh, a lot of our fans, we met with our season ticket holders uh, during the off-season, and that's one of the elements that uh, was mentioned. And so we incorporate a portable yeah. for that to that effect. David Phelps facing Lucas Duda, scoreless in the fourth. What uh, kind of feedback as far as some of the most popular places to visit at the ballpark do you get? You know, we still, people still love the art. Uh, you know, we just finished uh, doing the elevators uh, incorporated. We're just uh, talking about those, the yeah. Photos of 16 of our players. So uh, and we, we, you know, we've basically, uh, we've got 32 elevators highlighted there. So that's a nice piece, which adds uh, a nice art component, brands the uh, the product as well. And uh, all the art in the ballpark continues to be uh, very much uh, uh, something that people look for and walk around the building. And uh, we started selling a lot of authentic products as at our uh, retail locations as well, Team Store and uh, the portable at Section 6. So people, if they're looking for an authentic item that uh, was... Uh, was game used and uh, really developing that side of the business. Uh, a lot of uh, players like uh, Chiro and Stanton and Yelich and those guys are extremely popular. So, uh, Fernandez, of course. And so we've got a nice nucleus of players that people can collect some items from. Lucas Duda strikes out. Eric Campbell coming up. David Phelps. As you see the Mets box score in a scoreless game here in the fourth. One of the things we haven't talked about, and we've talked about stuff in the park that fans can uh, see and touch. One thing they can see but not quite touch is the field, and the field looks fantastic. I know for every indoor ballpark, whether it's Milwaukee or Arizona, Seattle, uh, those with natural grass, Toronto still has turf. It's a challenge to get the grass to grow, and you've been able to master that in three years. Yeah, it took us two years. We really struggled year one and year Don't two. Don't worry. I think Arizona's <laughs> still worried about it. They're still, still trying to figure it out. So, uh, no, it was a priority. And, uh, you know, I, Jeff King and myself, we uh, we walk the field every day. And uh, there's not a day that uh, we don't look at it. So, uh very focused on it, and the grounds crew has done a great job. What and, kind uh, of grass is used? Uh, it's past pal and platinum. And it's the same surface yeah. that's used uh, in Atlanta. And... Uh, yeah, you know, for in terms of being shade resistant, uh, it's by far the only one that's uh, that's really reacted as favorably as. Uh, and we've tried three different products, and and past palm was our last effort. And this year, you know, last year we changed it with the infield outfield. And uh, yeah, I would have to say right now the field is in pristine condition, and hopefully we can uh, we can say that at the end of the year. Well, right now the Marlins and the Mets just where they were last night, and that is. Scoreless baseball, 3 2 pitch at Javaria. Backhand. Quick release. Oh, nice play. And he gets Eric Campbell. This has been tremendous, Rich, watching at Javaria. Number one win player of the week, mainly because of all the offense. But when you have the offense, it's just going to draw the attention to the tremendous defense he gives you night in and night out. All in one motion. Plant and fire. Daniel Murphy now for the Mets. Oh. 
And Rich, one of the things we, we tried to do as well on Fridays, we were trying to build our Fridays with the fireworks and all that. So pre-game, people that to get people early, we're doing the dollar hot dogs every Friday from 5.30 to 7 p.m. And we have our $4 beers at the Budweiser bar in left field. Four bucks? Uh, Four dollars for, for beer and then the dollar hot dogs. So, so people can get there early and uh, not spend a lot of money. Speaking of coming early, new this year, if you're a season ticket holder or, or hold a season ticket package, whether it's full season or partial, you get to come to batting practice, Marlins batting practice, 430. Where is the door and, and how has that been received? Yeah, the season ticket holders, and this will grow as the year progresses, but uh, they can go to the third base entrance, uh, basically in our left field area and uh, enter the ballpark an hour before the the regular fans and in this way they can they can see the, the Marlins uh, batting practice catch some baseballs and, uh, and and get get their guests to the game spend an hour or more with their guests so it's worked out really well the, the response has been favorable and, and people are enjoying that experience Daniel Murphy with another hit Stanton cut it off and so there are two outs. Here comes Ruben Tejada. This is a fun team to watch take batting practice. Tommy and I see it every day. Obviously Stanton. They've added Michael Morse who sends him up at the Budweiser bar. And now is the Budweiser bar open? If I come here at 430 and watch batting practice, can I find a $4 beer at the Budweiser bar? On Fridays. On Fridays you can. But the Budweiser bar will be open every every night, every day for the season ticket holders. And we also open uh, the Kit Shack as well. So if, if people want to get a hot dog or some items, they, get, they can eat as early as 430 for the season ticket holders. Oh, coming. nice. So uh, season ticket holders can get a beer correct. while they watch yeah, batting yeah, practice. Absolutely. We I think people would be impressed watching Ichiro take batting practice, <laughs> who, who can and will take a few rounds and hit balls into the second deck in right field. Tommy, he's the number one uh, player right now in terms of uh, retail items uh, that we're selling mm. at the team store and the uh, portable. And last week with you know player player T-shirts, we sold 45 on Sunday. Stan drops the ball and safe at first is Ruben Tejada. Wow, you don't see that in a big league game much at all. I was already headed to the scorebook to put F9 in the book and Stanton. Well, for some reason, it looked, he played it off to the side, which is fine, but for some reason, it looked like he took his head off the ball and just flat out dropped it. We've talked about the Marlins defensively. That's the sixth error they've made. Stanton has made two errors, two of those six. Six is still the lowest total in the Absolutely. National League. But frustrating because now all of a sudden David Phelps who was out of the inning has to work to a tough left handed hitter and Kirk Newenheis. Newenheis. Flying out to right. That was back in the second. And Stanton. Obviously not happy with himself hoping that he gets another chance here to end the inning hoping that Phelps can get Newenheis. There you go. In the air to center field. Marcelo Zuna is there. And he makes the catch. All right, Cloak, you got five seconds. If I'm coming to the park, where should I go? What, where would you point me to? Well, first of all, you, you want to be behind home plate, uh, inside the bases. But take the time when you're at the ballpark to walk the entire promenade. It's a really nice experience. You've got nine innings to do it. And even though you've been to the ballpark, I promise you, you'll find some new things. All right, pace of play. Okay. Thanks, Claude. Thank nice you. work. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Fun Thanks. Form. Marlins and Mets still scoreless.
Had a fantastic charity. Uh, thanks to David and Melissa Blackman, brother and sister team here in Miami, for Parkinson's uh, disease, raising some research and some money. And there's some news in baseball today we'll get to in a moment. But good job. I know you've teamed up with D here. It is Parkinson's Awareness Month. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, we've, we've worked with D and he's been outstanding. The Marlins, we, we can't say enough. It, it's been really great in how we've... You know, really raised money through our stolen base challenge, which is running all through April, really the start of baseball, Parkinson's Awareness Month. And for every base D steals during this month, individuals, corporations are able to go ahead and pledge their support, raise some money for Parkinson's research, and really defeat PD one base at a time. There he goes, another couple of bases at a time as Big Gordon gets a double. Parkinson's, of course, is a, a terrible disease that steals your motion. Your, your range, your speed, and that was a big connection for you, huh? Absolutely. When we got connected to D and met him down in spring training, you know, it's really been a wonderful partnership. And since he steals a ton of bases, really the league leader, stealing a base requires a lot of movement. Parkinson steals that away from the, the folks that are afflicted by it. And we really thought this pairing would work out well and, and give people an opportunity to help make a difference. Kirk Gibson announced today the he has Parkinson's disease. Talk about how fans can help again, and uh, it's the BleckmanFoundation.org. Yes, absolutely. So we, we encourage everyone to go to our website, BleckmanFoundation.org, B-L-E-C-H-M-A-N, Foundation.org. Join us, make a pledge, make a contribution. Uh, your money will go to Parkinson's Research and will really go a long way. And you guys are Marlins fans, too, on top of that, huh? Lifelong, lifelong. Your mom has Mark Parkinson's. She's watching. Yes. Say hello to her. Mom, hi, Dad, hi. This is for you. <laughs> Good job, you guys, getting together with D. I know D's excited to be with you guys and uh, raising money in this important month, all right? Yeah, yeah. This is great. Thank you very much. David and Melissa Blackman doing a great job here. Miamians teaming up with D. Gordon. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Craig. D. Gordon at second. Martin Prado bounces it to short. Ruben Tejada fires across the diamond. And there's one out here in the fourth. Rafael Montero, the rookie right-hander out of the Dominican Republic, spot starter for the Mets to give a little distance and a little rest along the way. Not a six-man rotation, but in and out every now and then. Make sure those young arms get to the end of September with some juice left in them if the Mets do get to October. Well, I'll tell you what, he's pitched well enough that <laughs> maybe they might want to reconsider that. <laughs> Obviously, he's just... Well, he made a good pitch, too, to Martin Prado. I think we all were saying, okay, Prado's the guy you want to move D. Gordon over to third. Uh, unfortunately, good pitch by Montero, and he pulled that ground ball to short. D. Gordon still at second. Stanton takes in. Giancarlo struck out. He took a fastball for a called third and a deep count at bat in the first. Have to say, very, very terrific uh, Organization Parkinson's have a couple of friends who battle Parkinson's and uh, it's uh, wonderful that D Gordon has gotten involved in that. Here's the 1 0 pitch Stanton a bullet right at Campbell at third. And Gordon gets back. Campbell had it popped somewhat out of his glove, but he snared it before it hit the dirt. Well, a good adjustment by John Carlo to take that fastball on the inner half and just scream it out toward Campbell, unfortunately, right at him. So a leadoff double by Gordon, but Miami unable to get him over, and now down to their last out trying to get him in. Marcelo Zuna. Who bounced a short back in the second. Gordon double the first hit for Miami in the ball game. One last note on the foundation, the Parkinson's Foundation. The Marlins are having a, a terrific promotion in September, back to the future night. And the proceeds, a lot of the proceeds will go to the Parkinson Foundation. Of course, Michael J. Fox, who was the star of that movie. And of course, the movie had a reference to the Cubs and the Miami Marlins. In the, uh, in the Almanac. Yes, and Miami. Not, not, I don't know what they call I think they called them the Dolphins. What do they call them? 
okay. was, was just Miami. All right. With an alligator as the logo. That was before the uh, Marlins were ever the Marlins. And that's coming up at the end of September. I'll chase you around the uh, town square on my hoverboard. <laughs> yes, first uh, 15,000 in attendance will get a flux a capacitor. I was sort of looking for something good to hit. Gordon dancing from second. Breaking ball. Campbell backhands, loads up, cross the diamond. Nice play by the former Boston College Eagle at third, Eric Campbell. And this game is still scoreless. Visit your South Florida Chevy dealers today. My checkers, get checkers, authentic Philly cheesesteak. Try the new meatball sub, pick yours, two for five bucks. And by Subaru of Pembroke Pines, price service selection. You are gonna love us. Along with camera 12 in the Clevelander, Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Jessica Blaylock, Craig Minervini. Scoreless Marlins and Mets, just like last night. I think that's a panoramic shot she's taken. Or a panoramic selfie. Anthony Record muscles one to left. Ichiro is right there. Ichiro was open and Record hit him in stride. And there's one out. Here's Rafael Montero. Then up to the top of the order, Curtis Granderson. We have uh, we had a guest to the booth. We didn't have a chance to get in all of the uh, tweets and emails, but Tommy's riding shotgun on those. I'll get back to the emails. And Rafael Montero gets to the plate. Twitter or Instagram at Fox Marlins. Email foxmarlins at gmail.com. Marlins Park is the theme. Hashtag at Marlins Park. Questions about the park. We thank Claude Delorme for coming by. Oh. Actually got a tweet from Brian who's not real happy that if you don't have a season ticket, you can't get in to see Marlins batting practice. Marlins are one of the few teams in all of baseball that actually open for season ticket holders. And not just season ticket holders, but 10 game pack and 20 game pack holders get in as well. So that's, I mean, that's a a nice perk for just a 10 game package. Marlins one of the few teams in baseball that do that. Most teams in baseball they open the gates at 5:30 for a 7 o'clock game for everyone. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Boy, I really like the way David Phelps has gone right after not only everybody but especially the bottom part of the lineup. T-Mobile game changer. You want good pitching? There was plenty of it last night. Jared Cozart, eight innings. 
He left for a pinch hitter, remember, and that pinch hitter was Justin Bohr, who started that rally. Dylan G gave up that run on the Prado base hit. And then, of course, G's teammates bailed him out. Daniel Murphy, in particular, with the three run homer in the ninth. Nice tweet from Natalie, not a question, just a comment. And the comment was to uh, Claude Delorme. Hello, Claude. Thank you for making Marlins Park my happy place. So when someone tells her to go find a happy place, she comes to Marlins Park. So let's hope it's during baseball season. <laughs> that one popped up foul and out of play. Granderson with the count at two and one. There is Claude. Alvaro and his buddy have a nice picture of them enjoying a cold beverage at the uh, Budweiser balcony bar. Granderson lifts it in the air. Ichiro is there. And he makes the catch. Pitchers duel last night. Pitchers duel tonight. Mets and Marlins were going to the taste of Miami when we return. Marlins Park and telling me where I need to go around the ballpark and this is one location that I continue to see pop up. It is the taste of Miami and what's cool about this spot is that you're going to be able to come here and really sample some South Florida cuisine. Mama Choa is new this year and they have some awesome menu items like these loaded pork nachos. Check those out. Rich Tommy, I can see why you are wanted to send me up here to place an order for you and don't worry I've got it taken care of some food is coming your way pretty soon sections 26 and 27 is where you'll find the uh, pork nachos Michael Morse and a lot of business for Eric Campbell at third this one short hops Duda and dribbles into the camera well Morse will get second base but Campbell made some really nice plays earlier in the ball game on the Stanton line drive. But that one he almost had a little too much time. Yeah it's one of those where he knew he had time because Michael Morse was the runner and he short hopped Duda who couldn't pick it. And because the ball rolled into that camera well an extra base is added. So an E5. And here's Real Muto. Now the Marlins were unable to, to somewhat get him over and get him in on the Gordon double. And here's another opportunity with Real Muto and Ichiro on deck. Breaking ball, fly ball, center field. Should be deep enough to move Morse. 
tags and doesn't go. And Lagaris' throw comes into third. Well, Morse, not the fleetest of foot, decided not to go. Jessica has delivered. These are the. Yes, she has. Uh, Taste of Miami. Some pork sandwiches. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Can't wait. If you don't hear us for the next half inning, it's because <laughs> we. Uh, this one has. Oh, uh, look at that. Sweet. Very nice. See? Check under the hood. Each row now, runner at second is Morse. And each row flicks one down the left field line. Oh, and one to each row. And Miami got that double from Gordon in the fourth. But Prado bounced to short, Stanton lined to third, and then Ozuna bounced to third to end the inning. You know, you look back. At the five game winning streak. And all things were clicking. Big hits. Long balls doing little things moving runners. So far against the Mets this year things haven't clicked. And it's the Mets who have done the little things and the big things. Now you go back to the leadoff double last inning of D Gordon. And he was stranded. Those home runs by Flores up in New York. Even Ruben Tejada had a three run double in that four game sweep. We got a text actually on our secret text line from Marty in San Francisco, friend of the show and native of Miami. Actually, he's still the pride of Miami. And he's getting ready to watch the matchup that you talked about. Kershaw Bumgarner. Giants and Dodgers. And if you ever have a chance to listen to the Giants pregame radio, postgame radio, it's Marty Lurie. 0 2. Still a legend here in Miami. Each row, little dribbler finds Campbell. He gets to redeem himself. Close. Really close. Obviously, a play that the Marlins will look at on replay. Our first look, back of the glove. He's out. They got him. He is out. There's probably some frustration. Uh, from Ichiro because he knows when he was 31 that that would have been close. He got a lot of hits like that as a younger player, and he still has gotten hits like that. Well, you and I go through that in, in real life, don't we? <laughs> when we were 31. Well, the Mets are just going to flat out walk Echeverria here, and that was the importance of getting Morse over. With the real Muto at bat. Now Montero can intentionally walk Echeverria. Hey, one of the hardest hit balls tonight was hit by David Phelps back in the third inning. He lined out to right field. That's the first walk by Met pitcher in this series so far. No walks last night. Yeah, and it's an intentional one. And it's an intentional Go one. Go figure. There's the walk. Saturday night is a Saturday spectacular. A 410 start, so it's an early evening start. All you can eat seats, just 35 bucks after the game. First show of the Marlins Summer Concert Series on the West Plaza. National pop artist and Miami's own Jake Miller. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Phelps trying to help himself, and a 92 mile an hour fastball gets by him. Here's a good question, Rich, from uh, Justin. Who's faster, Ichiro in his prime or D. Gordon now? D. Gordon. 
except the way Ichiro comes out of the box, the way he swings and picks up infield bases. Home to first yeah. in his prime, Ichiro faster than D. Gordon. But I think first to third, pretty close. Be close. Yeah. I mean, it, there's a couple things to consider. Here's the 0 1. Pure oh. speed isn't always base running speed. So going from, say, at a 40 yard dash, Gordon would be faster than Ichiro. But going from first to third, Ichiro in his prime and Gordon in his prime, I might go with Ichiro. Pitch is out and it's one and two. Well, Ichiro closing in on 500 career stolen bases. He's the active leader in baseball. Phelps swings and misses and the Mets get an escape hatch and Montero takes it. This game still scoreless. Baseball moment and on this day in Major League history Lindsey Nelson Mets announcer broadcast the Mets Astros game from the Astrodome gondola 208 feet above second base Houston wins a shootout 12 to 9 and that game right there spawned the, the great home run call from Jim Brockmeyer put that ball in a little Italian boat because that one is gone Dola. <laughs> we think Rich they think they could build one of those gondolas here for the two of us. They could but I'm not going up in it. <laughs> Although I did have a chance uh, in my younger years and much more foolish years of going up to the very top of the kingdom in Seattle during a game and I just remember as I crawled out on the catwalk which was same spot as the gondola in the Astrodome the security guy said hey empty your pockets I said why I said, because you don't want to drop anything on Omar Vizquel's head <laughs> I remember Craig being in some high places he was on the catwalks over at the trop Arizona I think he got one of the high spots it got a little hot for him when Got higher in uh, Arizona. But a, but a cool 140 degrees up there dry. without the it humidity. Was dry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Houston, he wore the Puma suit, but not, he, I don't know that he went up uh, to the top. Oh. He was out with the El Caballo Nation. Yeah. Trying to keep score in the Puma scoop <laughs> in the Puma suit. I think that's part of our 10 run reel. Lagares jammed, floats it down the third base line, foul. Juan Lagares, Lucas Duda, Eric Campbell facing David Phelps, scoreless ball game. Top of the sixth.
South Florida Honda dealers bring you Marlins live tomorrow. Get you ready for Marlins and Mets. Bartolo Colon. And I, I think we will have a, a terrific Bartolo Colon hitting package built for the telecast. Matt Latos. And Colon. Which is in and it's two and two. What you got on the tweets there, partner? My email has uh, temporarily been. I think uh, apparently my email violated the disclaimer. Echevarria loads up for another throw from the hole and it's right on the money. Chest high from Michael Morse. We always have questions uh, it, such as this. Uh, one question. Jeremiah wants to know when Jose Fernandez returns to the rotation who will move to the bullpen. You never answer those things now because they all usually work their their way out. It, you know it could be somebody could be having a few issues. Somebody could be having some arm trouble. So you, you never know. You like to have options and that's one thing the Marlins do this year. They have options. We're seeing one of those options tonight in David Phelps and he's a good one. Lucas Duda is one for two. Singled in the first, struck out in the fourth. Good change up. Got him with a good curveball. David Phelps did. Struck him out in the fourth inning. Email from the Jose guy. Try the beer fest. It's awesome. At the Clevelander, there is a beer fest this year. Michael wants to know will Marlins Park ever get Shake Shack at some point. They do have that at City Field and in Washington but I'm not sure. Into the shift goes Lucas Duda and there are two outs. Now that was Martin Prado making the play. Here's Campbell who's flied out and bounced out. There have been two errors in this ball game and they've almost led to runs. John Carlos Stanton right and Campbell remember at third. I'm sure both are, are quite relieved that their pitchers bailed them out got them off the hook. We can't say enough about the assortment that Phelps is fired up there. Good curveball that last pitch. He's moved his fastball in and out. He threw a, a nice change up to Lucas Duda. He's had 10 or more starts in each of his last three years. So he's started some, pitched out of the bullpen some his last three years when he was a Yankee. That one's in the center field. Eric Campbell has a two out hit. Major League Baseball returns to Fox Sports 1 this weekend. Got a doubleheader Angels and Giants in interleague play, Reds and Braves at 7 o'clock. Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And no Josh Hamilton, an Angel anymore. No, but they are on the hook for what sounds like. An enormous chunk of that close to 80 million that he still owed on the Angels contract. I think the Rangers over three years or two and a half years are only picking up six million dollars. Murphy finds right field. Stanton has it. Holding second is Eric Campbell. And the Mets have put a couple hits. On David Phelps with two outs here in the sixth inning. Well, the, the good news is that all the Met hits have come with two out. A little bit of bad news is that Daniel Murphy is starting to get hot. Had the big hit last night, the big home run. Got himself a couple of hits tonight already. Nine RBIs the last five games, so he's actually started to come on much better.
We've had a few more emails and tweets about the DH in the National League. Benjamin from Texas. You missed Tommy's. It wasn't quite a rant, Benjamin, but he. Ah, it was. He was just a, an opinion, yeah. vociferous uh, opinion on that. Likes the pitcher in the National League. You were an American League player briefly with Toronto, right? Just for a half a year, yeah. So uh, of my ten and a half years, one half was in the American League. Did you ever DH? No, uh, the DH. You know who the DH was for the uh, for the Blue Jays, who I was with, was Rico Cardi. <laughs> Pretty good player. Had a nice run with the Braves. And every once in a while, Big John Mayberry with DH, but mostly Rico. Helps with that breaking ball, evens the count at one and one. There is the son of Big John Mayberry. He might he might be taller. I don't know that he's bigger. Different type, different body type, and he, a right-handed hitter. His dad a lefty. Good pitch by Phelps. One and two now. David Phelps at 82 pitches. There's John Mayberry Jr. Phelps steps off. Gamble at second, Murphy's at first. Fastball is up. Two and two. I don't think the real D Wade, but D Wade wants to know who was or is the best hitting Marlins pitcher, hands down, Dontrell Willis. The most entertaining star? No, hitter. Oh, best hitter. Best hitter. Dontrell Willis. Foul tip held by Real Muto. That would be a strikeout and a big one for David Phelps. It strands two in the sixth. Still no runs, but we got Pac Man. A Marlins game, it's a great place to hang out with your friends, but it's also a great place to bring the family. And hey, if the kids get a little restless during the game, be sure to bring them up to the kids' zone. Check this out. We've got a PlayStation 4. We've got cornhole. We've got an arcade machine that has Pac-Man on it. And we've also got a concourse that has a Wiffle Ball batting cage set up. Rich, Tommy, I know that this area is technically for children, but I feel like I might have to make a couple of visits up here throughout the course of the season. I did not know that existed. 
It's awesome. That's a great area. That's a great area. New this year. Special kids store, kids snacks, and Billy the Marlin cornhole. Might Here's the old one that to uh, Cincinnati. That one foul to the, uh, oh, the national uh, cornholing tournament every year they seem to have in Cincinnati. We were there a few years ago, and on the plaza in downtown Cincinnati, it was uh, wall to wall cornhole, and the competition was fierce. And this is the kids store with kids merchandise. Kids size jerseys, kids size caps. Tommy Hutton autograph binkies. 0 and 2 to D Gordon leading off in the sixth against Rafael Montero. And Gordon smokes one in the right field. I'm telling you, he just continues. And he's headed for second. Oh, Trouble yeah. with Granderson. Gordon is in. What I liked about that was the heads up. He never took his eye off the ball and he didn't hesitate rounding first. By doing that he put a little pressure on Granderson who may have peaked a little because he did that he bobbled it and as soon as he bobbled it D Gordon was at second base. Got his eye on the ball. He sees it. Kept in full stride all the way. Great lesson for young kids to see. Once again, Miami has a chance to get a runner over and try to get him in. They couldn't do it with Gordon in the fourth or Morse in the fifth. Prado is a perfect guy. He bounced to short in the fourth. So he's going to push a bunt, and Montero will field it and get the out. That's a case of a veteran hitter. Oftentimes a manager will tell him any way you can do it. Any way you're comfortable getting the runner over, just get him over. And sometimes a veteran like Prado will choose to push a bunt. Yeah, I think Martin just felt more comfortable this time with the push bunt. It's amazing what speed could do. If you're Michael Morse and you hit that ball to right field, Granderson probably doesn't boot. That's true. Now here's the showdown. It's Montero and it's Stanton. Scoreless game, infield in, one out. D. Gordon at third. The breaking balls out. You can see Wrecker set up out, and it wouldn't be a surprise if the Mets fall behind Stanton if they walk him. To set up a possible double play. Well, everybody's in except Campbell, the third baseman. And why would you play in with Stanton hitting? Because the ball's going to get you, get to you so quickly. Record creeps in. Stanton takes. That's the pitch that he's laid off over the last week. Yeah, I think the instructions to Montero are try to make a perfect pitch. If you don't, if you walk him, don't worry about it. Two zero. It's down and in. Do you let a 24-year-old rookie throw a 3-0 pitch and try to nibble, or you just I'm walk? I'm surprised him. they're letting him even throw a pitch because you would like to see Stanton with the green light, and if he gets a fastball, go ahead. But the dugout seems to be trying to get Wrecker's attention, but they're going to let him throw one. I'd be surprised if it's anywhere near the plate. But if it is, you have to be ready for it. 3 0. And he was. And he did. <laughs> it was a fastball. Stanton just missed it. Now it's 3 and 1. It's a perfect Boy, pitch. That a nasty slider. And so Montero has worked his way back into the at bat. Boy, right wow. on the corner. Perfect pitch. 
Now let's see what Stanton gets three and two. Wrecker back outside. That signal slider. Fastball lifted over the plate and Stanton drills it into left. Miami has a one nothing lead. The young pitcher got himself back into the at bat and then he tried to fastball. You saw where Wrecker was set up. That's where he been setting up for the breaking ball. This was a fastball right over the heart of the plate. Yeah, look at how Wrecker tried to reach back for it. The ball sailed. Middle of the plate. John Carl ready for it. I'm sure Terry Collins will have some questions about that after the game, especially with the young pitcher on the mound. But it's good to see the Marlins take advantage of it. And for John Carlo, his 18th RBI of the season, and that ties him with Adrian Gonzalez for the league lead. And the only pitch that had a huge portion of the plate was that last one. Here are those RBI numbers. So Gordon's base hit, the error by Granderson. The sacrifice by Prado. Miami gets him over, gets him in. And the inning not done yet. Buddy Carlisle is loosening up. Montero at 79 pitches. And he, like uh, Phelps, hasn't been stretched out all that much this year. Looked like Stanton was leaning a little bit. Couple stolen bases for Stanton. Zuna's bounced to the left side twice. I think, think a little surprised, Rich, that we haven't seen Ozuna take one deep yet this year. No home runs. I think one of the other interesting numbers over 100 career at bats against the Mets, a 292 average against the Mets, but he's never homered against New York. 1 0 pitch. And it's in. Alberto with a tweet. Best role player Marlins have ever had. And his vote is Damian Easley with Mike Mordecai a close second. How about a Mexican? Maybe they'll be on that franchise four for about role Alex Arias. Arias. Two early old. years. That's a slow tapper, and with Ozuna's wheels, no play for Campbell. Infield hit, first and second. And now Buddy Carlisle's pace in the bullpen picks up for the Mets. It's one thing, I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's the 28th infield hit the Marlins have this year, and they lead all the major leagues in that category. Morse now struck out and reached on the throwing air by Eric Campbell. Morse sends it to left. Neuenheis is there. Stanton tags and he'll hold second base. We've had a, a few Justin Bohr emails and tweets tonight. Daniel, the latest, will. The Marlins have him out there a little more often if uh, Mike Morse continues to struggle. I would think so. I think Mike Redmond has shown that he's uh, certainly willing to do that. If he has a guy that's struggling and another guy who's swinging the bat well. Real Muto fly to deep center his last time up. He's 0 for 2.
Up the middle. And a center field base hit. Stanton will score. Ozuna to third. And JT Real Muto adds a big, big run here at the bottom of the sixth. It's something the Marlins, especially against this Met Ball Club, they've struggled in adding on when they've gotten the lead. And to get a big two out base hit from the rookie, that's nice. A little bit of a hanging slider. Stayed back enough to take it up the middle just out of the reach of Tejada. Not by much. And that's it for Rafael Montero. The Marlins chase the 24 year old rookie. Buddy Carlisle in in a Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. And an old school cap. New school Rafael Montero, 24 years old. Made eight starts last year. And the Marlins have chased him with four singles, a sacrifice, an error. Buddy Carlisle takes over at the corners, and here is Ichiro. One thing we saw Ichiro do this weekend, he came up with the infield in and a runner at third and really changed his swing and lined one into right for an RBI hit. Yeah, so much of Ichiro's approach is situation. That right side is open with the runner being held. And Ichiro takes outside. He's 0 for 5 in the series. He's bounced to third and bounced to second. And that Buddy Carlisle will take either of those right now. Quick one from Jesus, who uh, wants to know who is the Marlins' top pitching prospect right now. Justin Nicolino. And after four starts in AAA, Nicolino is 2 0 with an 079 ERA. There will be a feature tomorrow on Marlins Live on Justin Nicolino. By the way, 6:30 start for that. You know, the other thing you can think of here, Petro is a great contact hitter. Real Muto runs better than most expect. So the ingredients for a hit and run, you got runners at the corners. Pitch gets by Wrecker. Here comes Ozuna. And he scores standing up. Carlisle got to the plate just as Ozuna did. And Miami has their third run. Real Muto is out at second base. Well, the Marlins getting some breaks in this inning. A wild pitch from Carlisle. A little surprised that Ozuna didn't slide. 
But this is a lot closer and shouldn't have been that close. It's a great play by Wrecker. Wrecker actually backhanded and flipped it all the way back in front of the screen. I think he fooled Buddy Carlisle as well, who slowed up when he got to the plate. Now he threw with a chance to drive in a run from second, and he sends one to left. And Neuenheis is there, and he makes the catch. 3 0, Miami. Your home for the most live sports. And by Lexus of Pembroke Pines. Price, service, selection. You're going to love us. Three nothing. Miami on top of the Mets. Top of the seventh. At Marlins Park in Miami. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Jessica Blaylock all around the ballpark. Craig Minervini joining us as well. John Carlos Stanton opened up the uh, scoring with an RBI single. JT Real Muto with an RBI hit and a wild pitch. Oh. Add it all up, and it's a three run inning for the Fish. Well, you think of the starting pitching over the last week or so, especially Jared Cozart last night. Eight shutout, two hit innings. David Phelps oh. taking this game into the seventh. Hansel Robles in the bullpen for the Mets. Dunn and Ramos in the pen in Neuenheis. Yanks one into right for a hit. Well, remember Phelps. In that nice start against the Phils, got to 95 pitches. 88 now. Here is record. And five of the six hits that the Mets have gotten have been from their left handed hitters. Granderson with one, Duda. Murphy has a couple. That one by Neuenheis. The only hit from a right hander was Campbell's single in the sixth inning. Tommy, you have a nice uh, email here from Maria who says, Glad that Tommy is back and well. Though everyone over the weekend did a fine job of filling in. Preston, Niner, and Carl Pavano. My sentiments exactly.
a strike to Anthony Wrecker. John Mayberry Jr., previously seen in the dugout, has now made his way to the on deck circle. That's one of the things for now, Terry Collins will be dealing with is just a four man bench. Smash Prado and it pops over him. Almost went through him. Ends up behind him. Wrecker is aboard. And all of a sudden the Mets have something going here with nobody out in the seventh. If picked, this is a double play, but well, what see that ball come up, catches him on the heel of the glove, also got him on that right knee, it looked like. Ball was stung by Anthony Wrecker. Well, remember, Mayberry was on deck, but now the situation has changed a bit. Mike Redman waits for Wilmer Flores to be announced as a pinch hitter, and he's on his way out to go get David Phelps. And they're going to call that a base hit off of the knee of Martin Prado. Phelps exits. With runners first and second, and nobody out. In the seventh, Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. Tomorrow, Marlins Mets finish off the series, and it's a Marlins Crazy Eight Wednesday. Chevron receipt, eight gallons or more. Bring it to the Marlins Park ticket office. Get your choice of an $18 Lexus Legends level or a $28 home plate box ticket. AJ Ramos, first out of the pen. And it's Wilmer Flores who's up. Kurt Neuenheis at second, Anthony Recker at first. Ramos gets a big swing and a miss. Flores has been one of those Mets that has hurt the Marlins. He had the two home runs that did a lot of damage in the four game Mets sweep. And he's hit in 10 straight against Miami. Oh, we talked about it. He has four. Home runs against the Marlins in his career. He has 10 career home runs, so four of his 10 have been hit against Miami. Soft liner, and Gordon gets it. We've seen his hops with the slam dunk celebration after the game and we saw the 
the former high school basketball standout climb the ladder to get this one. Boy, this is tremendous because he has to time it perfectly. He gets high in the air. Full extension. And then a nice landing and he looks at both first and second. Great job by the base runners to not get doubled off because if either Neuerheiser or Rector gets off a little bit further, it's a double play. Here is Granderson. Infield shift for Granderson takes a strike. Oh. Curtis Granderson has doubled on a one for three night. Soft fly ball going to land in front of Stanton. And the Mets have the bags loaded with one out. And now they've got some hot bats coming up. Juan Ligaris and then Lucas Duda. And the Marlins still have that stinging feeling from last night when they finally got a run and had the lead and the Mets erased it. With that three run homer by Daniel Murphy to win the game 3 1. That's a good point. We had some tweets earlier about how does that affect the team. And you forget about it. It stings certainly last night as uh, players leave the clubhouse. But you, you get the reminder of the sting, as you pointed out, in this situation now. Marlin fans and Met fans getting riled up now. Ramos misses in and it's 1 and 0. Much like Jared Cozart watched last night in agony. Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen.
Tonight, a three run homer by Daniel Murphy. Tonight, Juan Lagares, a three run double. Two of those runs charged to David Phelps, the other to Ramos. Lagares is still in scoring position, and now Mike Dunn comes in. He's got Lucas Duda with Eric Campbell on deck. I remember you've got to give him a check last night it was Campbell at second base that strolled over to third and stole it. This is an area Duda's really improved this year. Against left handers this year eight for 18 a 444 average. But two really good sliders for Mike Dunn. It's been a while since the Marlins have used Mike Dunn. We'll go back to that last game in Philadelphia. Duda. Gordon has it, waits for Morse, and gets the out. Moving up 90 feet. Is Juan Lagares. And here's Campbell now. Well, Dunn has one of the outs he needs to get. It's been a tough 24 hours for Miami's bullpen. Of course, it was Steve Ciszek who gave up the three runs in the ninth inning last night. Alex Torres with that new safety cap on. He's been very good out of the Mets pen this year. And Dunn nearly threw that to the screen. Real Muto just got the glove out and got it. That would have meant another run in all likelihood. One one. Got the strike. One and two. Campbell had some big hits up in that series in New York. Phelps watching. Foul back to the screen. Garris has tied it with a three run double. And Dunn strikes out Eric Campbell. Damage done in the seventh. Three for the Mets, three, three Marlins and Mets.
cool events that was going on was actually a scavenger hunt around the ballpark, and the theme was based on this guy right here, Jeff Conine. The theme was who stole second base, Niner, of course, being the first guy in Marlins history to ever steal a base, and I am with the winners right now. Santi, you're one of the people that found Conine, shouted out, I know who stole second base. What did it mean to you, first off, to be able to meet Jeff Conine? I mean, it was awesome. It's actually our first time in the ballpark, and just to be able to run around the ballpark and um, interact in social media and meet Jeff Conine, it was amazing. Uh, I got a signed autograph uh, baseball, and it was just it was amazing experience. Uh, definitely gonna come back. So you would say the scavenger hunt was absolutely a win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, totally worth, it. totally worth it. Yeah, it was worth the price. It was worth the time, the drive, the traffic, everything. <laughs> Well, thank you for participating and congratulations on winning. There's going to be two more social media nights here at the ballpark. For more information, go to marlins.com slash special events. Rich, Tommy, over to you. All right, thank you, Jessica. Very different ball game now. Certainly a, an inning ago. Three runs for the Marlins in the bottom of the sixth. Three for the Mets in the top of the seventh. And Danny Echeverria. Facing Alex Torres. We saw Torres up in New York, and the first time we saw him was the first time he had worn that new protective sleeve that fits over his cap. And a nasty changeup. Echeverria swings and misses. He wore the first prototype last year, which was actually a, a cap in itself. It was larger and heavier when he was with San Diego. And I think uh, the notoriety from wearing that. Kind of overshadows the fact that he's been really good out of the pen. Just like that. Fastball up. Strikes out Echeverria. Our Toyota trend. Fastest Mets Marlins game last night. Buck 58, fastest game in the big leagues. This season. And we're about 10 minutes past that pace into our second hour here. Jeff Baker off the bench gets an at bat as he pinch hits for Mike Dunn. Baker has always hit lefties well in his career. This is a hot lefty. Torres hasn't allowed a run in his last seven games over six innings. Yeah, you're right, uh, Rich. Jeff Baker, in his career, coming into this season, a 319 hitter against left handers. That changeup is nasty. Echeverria missed it. Well, think too, after his change up to Echeria, then he came in, tied him up with a fastball in, so he really mixed it up well, made some good pitches. We just saw Baker miss. Not only was it uh, 83 and dropping off the table, but it was on the outside corner at the knees. That's where Wrecker wants this one. It's a fastball. His differential fastball to change up is an even 10 miles an hour. 93 down to 83. Carlos Torres in the Mets pen. <laughs> At the knees. Baker didn't like it. But Torres has a pair of strikeouts. And here comes D. Gordon. On Fox Tracks. Not many pitchers like to have the 10 mile an hour difference, but uh, boy, when you spot pitches that way, really doesn't matter too much about the velocity. A perfect pitch from Torres. Outer part at the knees. Here is Gordon. Two more hits for the Major League hit leader. 36 on the season. And an average that is nudged its nose. Over 400, 404 now. Gordon is hitting on the season. Well, he came into the game at 395. That's the highest April average a Marlin has ever had, and he's taken that over 400 now. Trying to bunt. 
I told you. Too. Told you a couple of innings ago too that the Mets bullpen they've added to it a little bit. 16 consecutive scoreless innings since April 19th. To this point they've gone 17. Well, Alex Torres, you can't get much better than that. Strikes out the side in the bottom of the seventh. It's 3 3. This year, the Mets 5 0 against the Fish and a New York Miami rivalry all time. Marlins and Mets. The Mets lead that one. They've not met in the postseason. Dolphins, Jets. Miami has the one playoff win. AFC title game. The Knicks lead the Heat by 10, though that has narrowed recently. And the Rangers own the Panthers. There you go. Emails and tweets tonight at Fox Marlins for Twitter and Instagram. Fox Marlins at gmail.com is the email address. So the Marlins, after pinch hitting for done, go deeper into the bullpen. Brian Morris, who has been good this year, was great last year, throws hard, and has been used a lot early in this season. He gets Daniel Murphy, Ruben Tejada, and Kirk Neuenhuis. And Daniel Murphy knocks it into left center field. Ground first. Headed for second. Ozuna's throw is not in time. A hustle double by Daniel Murphy, who has three more hits in this ball game. And as we've said at the outset of this series, he'll be pushing 300 here in about three weeks to a month. You're always afraid when you you have a guy who's got a good track record comes in and his average is down early in the year because you know sooner or later he's going to get it back up there. You hope it's not against you. Never hesitated. Talked about Murphy. He's averaged 38 doubles a year the last three seasons. Now the Mets will try to get him over and get him in. And it's Ruben Tejada. And the Marlins thinking bunt more shortens at first. Rado is even at third. Let's see what Tejada does. He squares and fouls it at the plate. Marlins bullpen could not hold the 3 nothing lead for David Phelps. Phelps was charged with two of those runs, six innings of work. 
J.J. Ramos gave up the hit and it scored three. And at the Ligaris double, he was charged with one run. Two thirds of the inning for Mike Dunn, and here is Morris right into the fire. Back to the mound. Morris going to wheel, go to third. The tag is there. He's out. Murphy thinks he's safe, and the Mets are probably going to review this. Here's a look. Prado had the the glove down. And that is close. Yach's his back foot. That finally gets the bag. Tag not applied. Front foot doesn't get it. There's the tag. And I think it's before that back foot gets on the bag. If he hits the bag with his front foot, he's safe. Mets took a look at it, decided not to challenge it. Good play, good communication too. Morris really came off the mound quickly, knew exactly what he wanted to do, and Prado got back to the bag. So how does it first though? And Newenheis fouls it at the plate, a 95 mile an hour fastball for Brian Morris. But it, you know what? It's one of the, the to me, it's one of the downfalls of instant replay. If you watched Andrelton Simmons slide last night into Yunel Escobar, just a dangerous slide. It cut Escobar's hand. Escobar went down to make the tag, and, and Simmons blew right past the bag and kicked his glove right off. In a play like that, as an infielder, there's still a lot of instinct and common sense in infielders right now, and Prado is one of them. For you don't want your your glove down there that long. You were taught to get it down, beat the runner, and don't get hurt. But with instant replay, the tendency is to I got to keep it down there a little longer. Exactly. And that's changing, isn't it? Breaking ball misses down low. I mean, Prado's thinking get the glove to the front of the bag. Yeah, it's a different thought process for infielders making a tag like that. Used to throw it down, the sweep tag, out call, see you later. That was a courtesy given by umpires, especially if the throw beat the runner by a lot. More for safety than anything. One, two. Got him. Great pitch. Neuenheit strikes out. Here comes Rector. Boy, that's Michael. just a good fastball. 96 miles an hour. Michael Kadire is on deck, or at least uh, is in the on deck circle. Wrecker hit that smash that bounced off the knee of Prado. It was ruled an infield hit. And that turned into a big play in the seventh inning. Followed the new and heist hit. The Mets would go on to score three runs on the Juan Lagares double. Prado Stanton Ozuna. In the bottom of the eighth. Top eight here. A promising start to the inning. And the Mets are left with Ruben Tejada at first with two outs. Outfield very deep. Morris goes 3 0. Oh. On record, you much what? rather pitch to Wrecker here than Kadire. Absolutely. This, this is certainly a guy who you want to go after. He picked up his first hit of the year, that infield base hit, the seventh. 
And you'd rather face him with a runner first base than Kadire with runners at first and second. Three zero. -oh. And it's three and one. Morris ready. And he misses. That pushes Tejada into scoring position. Wreckers at first, and here comes Mike Redmond's old teammate. When he was a Minnesota twin, Michael Kadire. It was full of big hits. In the four game sweep for the Mets up in New York. Well, he played in three of those games, and in three of them, he was two for four in each of those games. And they all seem to be key hits run scoring hits, rally starting, and finishing hits. Hernandez, Miami's pitching coach, watching. Kadir isn't going to help you out. You count now two and zero, oh. and you have the left-handed bat of Curtis Granderson on deck. Marlins bullpen is quiet. Morris in his first inning of relief. Gave up the double to Murphy. Had a nice play to get Murphy at third on the bunt attempt. Now a 2 0. And Kanire trying to pull an outside pitch. Tough to do when it's 96 miles an hour. Uh, he, he tuned it up quick because he knew he was going to get that heat. He got it, but it really kind of cut away from him. 96 miles an hour. Ground ball short at Chavaria. Gordon at second inning is over. Two Mets left. Bottom eight in Miami. Marlins and Mets. John Carlo coming up in a 3 3 game.
MLB.TV Premium, number one live streaming sports service. 13 years it's been around. Every out-of-market regular season game live or on-demand in true HD. Real-time highlights. Hurry, hurry. Live look-ins. Here it comes. Pitch tracking widget. Look out. MLB.TV Premium includes a free at bat 15 subscription. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV. For more, Carlos Torres, not related to Alex Torres, but he's in, taking over for Alex. The Mets bullpen's been really good this year. Their starters have been outstanding. Miami has their two, three, four hitters Martin Prado, Stanton, and Ozuna. All lined up, bottom eight. Torres. Through one pitch, Carlos Torres, one pitch last night and got the win. Making his 11th appearance of the year. Yet he's thrown just seven innings. So you can kind of see how he's been used. And if you're wondering if that's the fewest pitches a pitcher has ever thrown to get the win, the answer is no. <laughs> because there have been pitchers that have come on. And picked a runner off. I saw it happen. And then the team that they're pitching for goes on to score some runs and win the game, and they get the win. There's a 2 1. Who was the pitcher? Daryl Brandon. Left hand. Came in, bases loaded, picked the guy off, never threw a pitch to the plate. He got pinch hit for, team went ahead. He got the win. Martin Prado walks. That one goes to the screen. And Miami is in business to open up the bottom of the eighth. Here comes Stanton. We have a, a lot of tweets about Martin Prado's jersey. Did you see Stanton climb again? Yes, Prado's shoulder, both shoulders, that's pine tar from his bats. Puts it heavy on his bat, so when he rests the bat on the right shoulder or finishes a swing, it lands on his left shoulder, that's what's left. And that is what's on his jersey. Stanton now takes up and in. And yes, those uh, uniforms and jerseys are washed up every night. Prado as well, very active with the bat. Tap. Not enough. Pine char that it would stick on the jersey, but it's getting close. Stan's RBI single was in the sixth. He's lined out and struck out. Rado's at first, nobody out. Carlos Torres, third out of the bullpen for the Mets. Big cut. I'll tell you what, the Nationals and the Braves are playing a wild, wild game. Atlanta was up, I believe, nine to one in that game. It's 11-9. Atlanta now in the seventh. <laughs> After a two-run hit, a two-run triple from Dan Ugler, who's got two hits tonight. Stanton takes out. Boy, that's a hard slider or cutter. Either one, good movement, taking it away from John Carlo. As Tommy pointed out, the Mets bullpen had a 16 inning scoreless run coming into this ball game. And they have added an inning and a third onto that. See what he gets three and one. Breaking ball pops away, but not far enough. And Prado has to hold. Stanton took a wild swing and a, and a pitch that ended up out of the zone. Yeah, got the 3 1 slider. Let's see if he throws it again. Slider, and he pops it up. Third base side, Campbell has room and makes the catch. It's a big out for Carlos Torres. Boy, there are times too you, you relive pitches over and over again. 
look at where this slider is. Wow. A good slider, the one before, a hanger there, and Giancarlo just missed it. Marcelo Zuda now. Prado still at first. Morse is behind Ozuna. Marlins have used Jeff Baker in this ball game as a pinch hitter. Which is out. Reed Johnson just doubled home Ugla. That game is 11 to 10 now. Wow. Atlanta on top of Washington in Atlanta. Ozuna have a green light? I would say yes. But we'll, we'll you, know what? Know. you also have to judge it on how the pitcher's throwing. And Carlos Torres has has been all over the place. He walked Prado. He went three and two. The stand made a mistake with a, a, a slider that he got away with. So a lot of it really depends on who's pitching and how they're throwing. Marlins Live brought to you by Checkers after the ball game. Clubhouse reaction. Mike Redmond's press conference highlights and a preview of the Bartolo Colon Matt Latos matchup, which should be a lot of fun tomorrow night. Dan Warthen sharing a smile with Carlos Torres and Anthony Recker. Hansel Robles in the Mets bullpen. Morse and 0 for 3 tonight. Morse's average is sunk down to 213. It was 1 for 4 last night. He would love to get a big pick me up here, not only for, for himself, but for the ball club. Morse in the center Get field. Like that. It's a base hit. On cue. Prado coming. Throw to the plate. He's by it and he's in. And Miami has the lead. Good attacking. We talked about that the other day and talking to Frank Medicino about Michael Morris. I'd like to see him attack a little bit more. He did right up the middle. You see the kind of arm that Lagares has. Probably a lot closer at the plate than I thought it would be, but a nice slide to get around record and just touch the plate. You know what? If Prado goes right at the plate. That would have been an interesting call as it was he had enough time to get around him because he didn't have the ball and he was still kind of blocking him off the plate. <laughs> JT real Muto. 4 3 Miami. JT with a big RBI single back in the sixth inning. Ozun is at second, Morse at first. 0 oh and 2. Fastball fouled back. His base hit in the sixth gave the Marlins their second run, and it was a two out base hit.
stays at 0 2. The Reds beat Milwaukee tonight. Milwaukee is 4 and 17. Steve Ciszek getting ready. And he'll have the top of the order. Real Muto to center. The guard's got a good jump, and he's there to make the catch. Hit it on the button. Two outs. And here is Ichiro. Boy, another good at bat, though, and an approach. He had two strikes on him. He stayed back on this breaking ball, identified it, hit it hard, but to the wrong guy. Between the plate and the mound with some defensive signals. Ichiro is 0 for 3 and 0 for 6 in the series, and that coming off a six game hit streak that was snapped last night. <sighs> it's the first run that the Mets bullpen has given up in. A little over 17 innings. Nitro pulls it. Foul. So just a little crack in their armor. I think remember last time up earlier in the game each row appeared to break his back on a, on a ground ball and I mentioned he doesn't do that too often he just makes such good contact on the, the meat of the bat all the time that he rarely does get jammed and break bats. Bouncer out towards second and Murphy. Gets him at first. Miami settles for a run. Steve Ciszek, a shot at redemption. To the ninth we go. The dealers and by Kubota. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to Florida Kubota Dealers.com. In Miami tonight, Steve Ciszek, 24 hours after a disheartening blown save last night in the ninth, is back up on the horse. Last night, problems with location all season long. This is earlier against the Rays. See where the target is and see where the pitch is. Up and more on the plate. Got him hurt in that blown save against the Rays. 
Again, the target down, and that was last night. That was Ligaris, the double. The pitch was up. So we talked some about velocity, but so much of it has been about location for Ciszek. Down, breaking ball stays middle in, and you see how he misses the target. At this level, it's just tough to do that and continue to get by. Ciszek himself said after last night he just didn't execute his pitches, and it showed. And if there's one guy who wanted to get back out there tonight in this situation, it was Steve Ciszek. Well, he gets his shot, but he also gets the top of the order for the Red Hot Mets. Curtis Granderson leads it off. Then Ligaris, then Lucas Duda. And he starts him with a changeup. Fastball misses out, and it's one and one. As we told you earlier in the telecast, for Ciszek, the velocity isn't always there in April. But he picks up steam as the season goes. He worked on that changeup offseason and spring training. Low with a fastball. And it's three and one. Ligaris had the three run double to tie the game in the seventh. And it just misses. Granderson is aboard. A leadoff walk. And on the other side of the, the coin, Rich, you have the Mets. who are off to a tremendous start, 15 and 5. They've had many comeback wins. They had one last night, fresh in their mind. So they know they've done this numerous times already this year. Brad Hand is up. Eight of the Mets 15 wins have been comeback wins. Ciszek chases Granderson back. Two stolen bases this year. Morse looking into the dugout. And he will hold the runner. And Ligaris a dangerous bat, especially against the Marlins this year. Popped him up. Outfield grass. It's Gordon, and he makes the catch. There's one out. And a little better feeling for Ciszek. Chuck Hernandez, Mike Redman, Lucas Duda. He certainly has the power to knock one out of here. And he, among other Mets, has clobbered the Marlins this season. Boy, I thought, Rich, one of the hardest things for a pitching coach is, is to get that reliever, especially the closer, back on track. The starter can go in between starts and throw some pitches at the bullpen. Perfect location on those first two strikes to do them. But harder for a reliever to go down and throw 30, 40 pitches before a game to try to iron things out. Foul back. Oftentimes, relievers iron it out when playing catch with each other on flat ground before or after batting practice. We'll see if Ciszek's been able to iron it out since last night. Granderson, the tying run at first with one out in the ninth. Duda fouls another one back. Lucas Duda, breakout year last year. Thirty homers, drove in 92. Mike Davis was traded early. Duda given the job, and he took it and ran with it. He's not going away easily here. That's one of the things that that's helped him this year, and we've talked about it. Maybe more base hits the other way, in the in the left center, and his ability to hit lefties a lot better this year. Check 
swing did he go? No. A look. It's not whether the bat crosses the plate, whether the wrist break, it's whether the umpire decides that the hitter made an attempt to strike at the ball. One, two. It's out. I guess the question for Cishek, we saw that his velocity was in the upper 80s. His average fastball last year was lower 90s. Until that velocity arrives, how does he get out? That's one, it's one weapon that kind of vanishes because then he has to have pinpoint control. Got it! On a breaking ball. That's how you do it without the fastball. Exactly. You go down and in with the Shrek slider. Here is Eric Campbell and a visit from a rookie catcher to a veteran closer. And we don't have to tell you that that guy Daniel Murphy's on deck. Anderson still at first. Campbell, Pato, Gordon, ball game. Steve Ciszek, a little redemption. A blown save last night in the ninth. He nails it down. A one-run win for Miami tonight to even this series at a game apiece. And that has to feel good. For Ciszek, for the Marlins. A couple more hits for D. Gordon. Another win for Brian Morris, who goes to 3 0. And the Marlins climb to 9 and 12. That after a 3 and 11 start. Marlins live. Brought to you by Checkers is coming up. 4 3 the final. Miami finally beats the Mets. <laughs>